I would imagine as you look at Coach Fran, second year for Dennis Francione as the head man at Alabama. And across the way, but a former, he played here, was an outstanding offensive lineman, now with his 10th season as the Tennessee head coach, a winning percentage of almost 82%. The series, well, Alabama holds the edge there, but look at the bottom line. Tennessee has won the last seven, first team ever to beat Alabama seven straight times, and they've won those games for almost 15 points a game. Tennessee won the toss, they deferred, and Alabama will receive the weather. We didn't think it was going to be a problem. We have a really heavy mist falling here in the Knoxville area. We'll keep an eye on it because the ball could begin to get slick as thick as this mist is coming down. Chandler's Luke is the deep man as Newman will kick it off. Also Hudson back in a dual safety. That's Triandos right there. Ray Hudson wears number 27. What a matchup this always is. Here comes the kick. It is returnable. On the run from the nine yard line is Luke. Right up the middle, 20. Runs into his own man, going to be stopped as he gets to the 26-yard line. And let's take a look at the starters in this ball game tonight. Tyler Watts, the senior out of Pelham. Now talk about injuries. Boy, this is a tough kid, very durable, but he has been out of the lineup more than he has been in it the last four weeks. But tonight he gets the start, and it will depend on his healthiness whether we see Brody Coyle coming in early on or if Tyler can stay healthy. 4-3, the defense by Tennessee. Linebackers bounce around. They stay at home, and a pass on first down is going to go complete, and it'll be a loss of two to McLean. So here are the other specialists. Williams and McLean in the backfield. Sam Collins and Triando salute the wide receivers. Donald Clark, good catching tight end, is uh, on the outside. Smiley, very physical player. Brent is probably the best up here, and Portis probably the second best as far as grading out. The Alabama line, extremely physical. They like to challenge you. Collins in motion. And a handoff right at the middle. This is McLean, and he's going to be hit by a gang tackling defense. And there's nothing there as Whiteside and Peace come up to make the tackle. Defensively, strong group. Hand, Moore, Franklin, and Veal. Uh, Veal not playing 100%. He was a tackle. They moved him outside. The linebackers, you just saw Whiteside and Peace. Eddie Moore actually leads the volunteers in tackles. And in the secondary, what an athlete. Julian Battle was the strong safety. They've moved him over to corner third down. Alabama needs to take it out to the 36-yard line. Blitz off the corner. Picked up. Now it breaks down and Watts running for his life. He's going to be sacked. And a late flag has come in at the 16-yard line. Carlton Neal is the man who got through and made the tackle. Insult to injury, Mike. Yeah, sometimes when you lose a star player, everybody picks it up. And that's why, as a coach in the locker room before the ball game, when you explain that Kelly Washington's not playing, everybody has to raise the level. Well, about to kick here, Mike. One of the great, <laughs> I think, gutsy stories at this conference. The foul is holding by the offense. That foul is declined. Fourth down. Lane Bearden, who injured a knee, we televised the game over in Arkansas on a fake punt. It is the knee that he kicks with. You can see the brace on there. He's going to have to have ACL surgery. But he just told his coaches, I demand to kick. I can do it. I can't cover, but I can kick. Now we got movement at the line of scrimmage, or did the no, I think the play they have movement. Run. Not a good start for Alabama. No. On the road, you, do, you don't need this non-cohesive start. No, and you got a Tennessee team that's reeling a little bit. Uh, have an injury, but lost uh, their last football game. So you've got a chance to get this crowd out early. I, I think they may, they may take this flag back. There's no foul. No foul. The movement Fourth was down. the up backs getting in tighter and that's why it's not a penalty Lane Bearden last week he told the coaches if we have a penalty on a kick if I kick it once I can't kick it twice 
and his head coach just looked at him and said, okay. This week he said he is stronger, and he could kick two in a row if they do get a penalty on this. And they're coming after him. Gets it away. Not real long, a wobbly spiral. Now takes a big Alabama bounce, and it will be touched dead at the 37-yard line. So let's look at the starters for the Tennessee Volunteers. Casey Clawson out of Northridge, California, is back. He has a huge harness underneath because that collarbone has got a slight fracture in it. And Mike, he told us on Thursday after practice, it actually, he can't throw the ball as hard because of the pain in there. Hurts his velocity. Ron, I, I look for a lot of screens, a lot of quick passes, a lot of draws and traps that try to slow down this rush to keep them away from Casey Clawson. One tight end and two backs. You see Alabama shifting, short drop, throws the first pass, got it complete right over the middle. It's enough for the first down. Tony Brown, the sophomore out of Lauderdale Lakes, Florida, catches it for 12 yards. Here are the other specialists. Jabari Davis and Troy Fleming in the backfield. Tony Brown, who you just saw, and Leonard Scott, and a really outstanding tight end in Jason Witten. Up front with the offensive line, Munoz is back after a year's absence with a knee injury. Probably Open Husel is the man who grades out the best, along with Scott Wells, who was the anchor right there in the middle. So Tennessee comes out very positive offense and very positive on defense as they pick up first down on their first play. Jabari Davis, the ball carry, he'll go for maybe one yard, and Moorhead is the man who makes the tackle. Here's that front four, and Mike, you think that this is as good a front four as anybody has in college football. Might be the best. I, I thought Miami had the best defensive front, but maybe Alabama's better. Boy, very, very physical. And some guys who can really run, uh, particularly Wortham, Roach and Brooks Daniels as far as the linebackers in the secondary. How about these guys? They're going to be challenged, both the corners, uh, Dixon especially. Pepra is a guy that has had to play. He's out of Plano East in Texas. Uh, had to play as a freshman, and he has accounted for himself very well. Pass caught by the tight end. That's Witten. Witten still on his feet, and finally inside the 35. He's the young man who got the winner against Arkansas in overtime number six. He is a load at 6'6", 265 pounds. Carl Torbush talked about to his defense that we had problems tackling him last year, and they missed the first tackle, the chance they get to bring Jason Witten down. So Tennessee has come out on fire. Everything they did defensively was right. So far on the offense, everything they've done has been right on. It is a first down at the 32 of the Crimson Tide. Clausen, short drop again. Going to go to the end zone, and this is going to be overthrown as miscommunication here. Looking back at the line of scrimmage, uh, the wide receiver just said, mm, wrong route, I think I ran it. Adrian Karsten down on the sideline. Welcome back, my friend. What do you got for us? Fun to be back. Ron, I've got the surprise of the Alabama coaches when they came out and they didn't see number 15, Kelly Washington, warming up. Now, what does this mean to Alabama's defense? Number one, they don't have to worry about a guy who's even a decoy when he's not a receiver. Number two, they don't have to worry about the man who's responsible for over one-third of Tennessee's first downs. That means they can go after Kelly Cla uh, Casey Clausen rather and hit him as many plays as possible. Okay, Adrian, thanks. We look forward to hearing from you tonight. So far, Clausen has not been touched in the ball game. Second down. A quick out pass gets it in the flat, and that ball is uh, overthrown. That's Tinsley. He picked the ball up. They're going to say it was just a backward pass. If it is, it's an Alabama touchdown. No signal until the official says right here, touchdown. 65 yards as the ball was thrown away from the line of scrimmage. Gerald Dixon. the new kicker last week on extra points will come in to attempt the extra point here he was perfect against Ole Miss six of six the booze you just heard from the crowd upon the telescreen the fans got to see it and that kick right there a mishandled snap and he misses the kick wide to the right and now here comes a flag in Julian Battle came rushing in and may have hit the kicker he did
So Doyle Jackson sorts things out. The penalty half the distance to the goal line. We're going to show you this play in a moment. Foul was roughing the kicker by the defense. Foul will be half the distance to go. A mistake by the Tennessee defense there. Special teams giving Alabama a second chance. Should have been six to nothing, but they roughed the kicker. And Robinson will get a chance to do it again to keep his streak alive. As I said, six of six last week against Ole Miss. Now make it seven of seven. Another flag is down. rule that penalty is declined okay Michael this is close very close Ron when you look at Casey Kloss and he's about to 42 and I think he throws the ball out to Derek Tinsley about the same area the 42 yard line Gerald Dixon here's watch his feet right here and watch where he's throwing I believe it's a pretty good call by the officials I do too and I'll tell you what it shows how really right on the officials were Mike but I think it is less than a half a yard but it was a backwards pass and it can be advanced yeah, and Gerald Dixon wisely picked up that football didn't wait for any referee to say hey it's a backward pass that's a good defensive move so officially 68 yards on the fumble return and we'll take a timeout 11 23 left in this opening period at Bama strikes first Mike Ron you talk about real close we'll watch this Casey Claus and we're gonna freeze when he throws the football he's about to 42 just in front of the 42 and he's thrown out to Tinsley and the ball, Tinsley's on the 42, so I, I think 38, Mike. Yeah, at, but it, a 38-yard line, I think it's a good call. It's really close. Oh, it, it's literally by inches, but I agree with you. I think the pass went backwards. That is advanceable. And as you said, Dixon was ex yeah, very alert. He was very alert because he picked it up, so they blow the whistle. That's, that's fine, but they didn't. And he took it 68 yards for a touchdown. Tennessee to that point had done everything almost perfect in this ball game and now they find themselves down seven to nothing this is Larkin's on the return to stop for a moment tries to get it to the outside ball is loose and it's recovered by Alabama or did he recover it out of bounds okay first and ten Tennessee and the ball will come back to where the ball was fumbled wow Corey Larkins uh, is an Alabama native from Opelika, has been an Alabama fan. They expected him to have a big football game tonight against the Tide. Wanted to make something happen. Well, I'll tell you what, Phil Fulmer's heart already was going, I'm sure, 200 beats a moment. And when this happened right here, straight up the middle, this is Davis. Gonna have five, six, and seven, almost eight yards gained on the play. Now, what what Tennessee's got to do right now is I know it's impossible to erase, but what they got to do right now is settle and do just what they were doing. I mean, they made a mistake on the play, and the one thing that I have to give Tinsley a, a little bit not credit on, but on his behalf, with this missed falling, Mike, I think it's hard to see a ball that's thrown with a pretty uh, pretty good dispatch on it. Yeah, it's hard. That's a tough catch when you. Yeah. Go on that quick bubble screen. Here's the pitch. Flag is down. Davis hurdles the man. He'll have the first down as he takes it all the way out to the 37-yard line. Cornelius Wortham on the stop. Offside defense. Ron, these teams do not like each other. Uh, this is a big rivalry, and here Tony Brown takes a swing uh, right off the bat against Bolden, Herschel Bolden, number 25. So they're getting after it pretty good. So no love between these two schools. Well, I don't think they will allow that to happen again, do you? I'm surprised it happened <laughs> once. <laughs> I am too. There was two penalties on that play. Yeah. And both of them could have sat down if the official really wanted to be harsh about it. What Tennessee has to do 
first down's a big down for them. They got to be able to run the ball against this Alabama defense. Cedric Houston, who did not play against Arkansas when we were here last because of an injury to his finger in the ball game. Clawson gets this one away, looking for Davis, and the ball is overthrown. And Adrian Carson, let's check back with you. Tennessee receivers, obviously, minus Washington, are complaining about seeing the ball for two reasons. The heavy mist, really not the rain, against the lights and against all the orange in the stadium as they run away from Casey Clawson. The ball gets lost in all of the mist, the lights, and all of the orange, believe it or not, Ron. That's a complaint from the receivers. You know, Adrian, I, I really, that's the reason I said what I did about Tinsley. And as Mike said, that's a difficult pass to catch anyway. He had some pretty good zing on it. And uh, that's one of the reasons the young man didn't handle it. That missed is pretty heavy. Witt Witten is split out now. Trying to get the uh, linebacker coverage on him. They throw it and it is complete to Witten. Charles Jones comes over to make the tackle. What Adrian talked about, if Washington's out, what does that allow Alabama to do? It allows Alabama to cover Witten a little bit easier. Now, they allow him the short catch. Charles Jones makes the tackle. But Witten now, all of a sudden, all week you plan on double coverage against Kelly Washington. Now you put it on number one, Jason Witten. You know, he told us on Thursday afternoon after practice, he hoped that they doubled Kelly all night long so that he would get single up coverage. Timeout called by Tennessee. So we'll take it with him. 9.33 left in this opening quarter. Alabama, 7 0. Well, we are back. It is third down, and the line to make is the 47 and a half yard line. James Banks, who played quarterback against Georgia, he is the number two quarterback, he is in at wide receiver. Split down to the bottom of your screen. One of the two receivers down there. Clawson with an audible. Gets this pass away, and again, miscommunication between quarterback and wide receiver. James Banks is the man that the pass was intended for. Here's the problem, Ron. When you're a quarterback in your wide receiver, you split your time during the week in practice. So he obviously runs the wrong route here. And again, uh, the quarterback, when you're when you're splitting time, sometimes you're not as well practiced as you should be in the ball game. Dustin Colquitt, he's a lefty. You see his average. And in this uh, this heavy mist that is coming down, that ball really tails away from you anyway. If you're accustomed to seeing the right footer, this could be a difficult handle for the deep man. Here's his kick. Wobbly spiral. It is caught 18 20 and Williams is going to be tackled at the 22 39 yards in the kick and a three on the return and Reese Davis let's check with you Ron down in Kyle Field Nebraska taking on Texas A&M the Aggies have scored 40 or more in three straight games Dustin Long firing out to Jerome Weber in the Aggies with a 14 to 7 lead but Nebraska is now down on the doorstep trying to tie the game and Matt Moore starting for UCLA Stanford's up at the half. Okay Reese I tell you Texas A&M changed their offensive coordinator and they they have not looked back. Yeah they really have been. Smokey getting a little damp here tonight but working and cheering on for the team anyway. Here comes Tyler Watson the option play and he'll fight his way almost to the 30. One of the things that you forget about Tyler, not only his leadership ability and his understanding of the offense, he has become a really strong runner, Mike, and he's not an, an easy prey when it comes to if you've got to come up and make the hit on him. But when you talk about that, he's 58 yards shy of a thousand, thousand yards rushing, but he knows the offense. He's yeah. a coach on the field for Dennis Franchoni. Here to McLean and the I formation behind him. Haven't seen much of Beard tonight. He had an outstanding game last week against Ole Miss. Gets this hand off and he bounces off a tackler and then falls down at the 31 yard line. Not going to have the first. So it'll be third down and short. His white side put the stop on him. Uh, before the ball game, talking to the Alabama coaches, they talked about Santana here. They figured he's going to have a big ball game. He's from Nashville. He's coming back in state. They say he's had a great week of practice and very focused for this football game. Seven to nothing. If you just joined us, Alabama leads, and it came on a 68-yard fumble recovery, a backward pass that was picked up and returned. On 
third down. Watch. Drills it long. And it is almost intercepted. That is Rashad Baker who got back there. Clint Johnson, the attended receiver. So again, a good sequence by John Chavis's defense. They're keeping them in this football game. Almost the interception right there. I believe Tyler Watts missed the open man, Sam Collins. Gurdon to kick again. You can see him going to that towel, trying to dry off his hands. As the mist can come, uh, continues to come down, it's very heavy. About the midway point of this opening quarter, 7-0 Alabama. Tennessee's got to return on line drive kick off the side of his foot. Larkin picks it up at the last moment, gets by the first way, but will not get by the second. And it stopped it to 28. They have to move Larkin up tighter because he's not getting a lot of depth bearing on his punts. 44 yards and a kick and four on the return. We'll be right back. So welcome back to Knoxville as the heavy, heavy mist continues to fall. Tennessee on first down, one of the things you're going to keep an eye on tonight. 12 yards on their very first play. It was a pass play. But since then, they've averaged only two and a half yards per try on first down. That's important for them to establish four or more yards on first down. Randy Sanders, the offensive coordinator, commented on that extensively, talking about how important it was for them to play in front of the chains. Clawson with another audible. And as you can see with that tight shot of Clawson just a moment ago, it's no longer missed. It is, it's now pretty good rain coming down. Clawson zings this one and it has it complete at the 39-yard line to Leonard Scott. Dixon with the man on the uh, cover. Pass complete. Gerald Run. Dixon, the, the guy who ran back the, uh, the return for the touchdown. Run. We had the game when Casey Clawson got hurt. In the fourth quarter against Arkansas, he was four for six after that injury. Ran a couple quarterback draws, and the trainer was trying to get to him. He knew he was hurt. He stayed away from the trainer, so he didn't have to talk to him, so he didn't have to leave the game. <laughs> well, he told me also in the fifth overtime of a game that went six, he said, I got hit in the back of the head, and he said, I, I think it helped ease some of the pain because I wasn't sure where I was. <laughs> Here's for the first down again the short drop and a pass and boy a miscommunication. That's three times in the ball game now that the receiver has run one route and Casey threw it somewhere else. Here's here's the injury to Casey Clawson in the fourth quarter when he got kicked and uh, hurt, but uh, hit the touchdown pass to Jason Witten in the overtime. Jonathan Wade is the man who was at the bottom of your screen. Pitch back to Davis, fumbles the ball, dribbles it once, then gets on it at the 35-yard line. Go back to what you just said, uh, three busted routes. When your quarterback's hurt and he doesn't practice all the time, that's what happens. And here's another example of pitch out to Jabari Davis and uh, gets fumbled, and they're just not clicking three fumbles so far against Tennessee very fortunate that disaster has not struck they had disaster strike on the uh, backward pass that was advanced Blossom gets this pass away has it complete that's to Jumbo Fagan and he takes it out to the 43 yard line some groans from the crowd but I tell you he talked about it the other day, and he, he is not a complainer. He wants to be in this football game. But he even said that when he has to reach across his body on one of those long reach kind of plays, he said, Mike, it's really sometimes excruciating pain, more so than when he throws. But you can tell his velocity is off. Not getting a lot of help either no. out of his receivers <laughs> on the routes. So it's fourth down, and again, a Colquitt comes in to kick. Much better one this time. High hanging spiral inside the 10 yard line is Williams. Shaw Williams gets by the first wave and here comes a late flag in as he'll be stopped at the 14. 48 on the punt, six on the return. 
Well, that's a block in the back or something similar. Alabama's going to scrimmage from very deep in their own territory. That's what it's going to be. Doyle Jackson with the call. It's Sunday night football on the ESPN at 830 Eastern. Coverage begins with NFL primetime presented by Miller Light at 730. It's the Indianapolis Colts and the Washington Redskins. Manning against Spurrier. The old time college rivalry renewed. Will Peyton finally knock off Steve? Don't miss Sunday night NFL beginning at 730. Well, Peyton's going to have the benefit of a good running game. Washington Redskins have given up a lot of yards to the run. Well, the crowd in the end zone to our left, which is the north end zone, really trying to make a lot of rackets, so Tyler Watts has problems. Play action, drop the football. Now is just going to try to get what he can, and there is an example. They're drying the ball after every snap, but that thing is really getting slick. Reese Davis, let's go back to you. All right, Ron, Nebraska has lost five straight games away from Lincoln. A&M up on the Cornhuskers, 14 to 7. Jamal Lord. Making a play in a passing game, hitting Wilson Thomas, who gets it down deep in Aggieland. David Horn catches him with a touchdown. We're tied up at 14 in Michigan State. Remember, no Jeff Smoker. He's suspended. Wisconsin's laying the wood in the first half. Wood being laid there and an egg being laid. <laughs> Second down. They need to take it all the way out to the 18-yard line from a shotgun as Watts drills this one out in the flat. What a defensive play. Clint Johnson made the catch, and as soon as he got it, Rashad Baker was just all over him. That is excellent work. Tennessee's defense got to make a play here, Ron, to stop Alabama to give the offense, which is struggling, good field position. Les Caning, the offensive coordinator for the Alabama Crimson Tide, said one of his concerns in this ballgame, kids trying to do too much because it's a big ball game. Just do what you are supposed to do and carry out your assignments, he said. From the shotgun and third down. Right over the middle, got a man and he overthrew him. Oh my goodness, Fulgham. If he could have dropped that one in, there was a defensive back that was deeper than Fulgham, but that would have gone for huge yards. Ball a little too high, took off on Tyler Watts. Maybe the wet ball. Fulgham's open, but the ball clearly overthrown. Reaction by Tyler Watts. Here's where Tennessee might go after this punt. I was going to ask you, Mike, if you were on the sideline, do you think that's what you would do? I would do? do two things. I'd go after the punt. I'd move my punt receiver up a little You're bit. You're right. He's too deep because he's been kicking in front of him, but then getting a 10 or 15-yard bounce. He's 40 yards deep. Gets a good pass. Boy, they got pressure on him very high. And it's going to be Mike Balls is turned over, and Alabama has it at the 47-yard line. Another break for the Tide. Chris James got down on special teams to make the recovery. So... Boy, what an example of a guy who is playing hurt. Bearden got that ball very, very high. Corey Larkins again, the Alabama native who's trying to, to play the game of his life tonight. Uh, Alabama fan, he wants it badly, but a mistake. 3.53 left to play in the opening quarter. Alabama 7-0, and that came off a turnover by Tennessee. Much better field position now. Here comes the option. This is Hudson. Turns the corner. 50, 35, 40. Look out. Finally going to be tackled inside the 35 by Julian Battle. 22 yards. And Hudson, who gives you a change of pace from Beard and also Shad Williams. It's a tailback by committee. You've got Santona Beard. Uh, you've got Shad Williams, Ray Hudson, who is a very speedy 5'11", 194. Took that option play from Tyler Watson. Worked his way upfield. Crimson Tide now trying to put an offensive touchdown on the board. First down, new line of scrimmage just outside the 31 of Tennessee. That movement, left tackle. Looks like Wesley Britt. 
Or was it Mathis? Mathis. Yeah, it was Mathis. It was a lot of checks at the line of scrimmage, and with this noise. Ron, it makes it difficult to make the checks because all of a sudden the tackle hears something and he starts to move. Here, Tyler Watts is changing the play, and all of a sudden he moves. And of course, everybody points to you when you move, and the flag comes in. <laughs> it was Carlton Neal who was doing the pointing, number 46. He was injured in the Arkansas game. He is back as well, obviously. Under three minutes to play. Hand up, breaks it to the outside, 30, 25, and Santonio Beard will take that very close to the first down at the 23-yard line before Baker knocked him out, 13-yard game. What makes this play, Ron, is the first contact. Santonio Beard with a great stiff arm to get to the outside, and then he gets a good block from his wide receiver, Beard. Santonio Beard had an outstanding game last week against Ole Miss, scored the first two touchdowns of the afternoon against the Rebels. As I had mentioned just a moment ago, they had not given it to him a lot prior to uh, this drive right here. But he just showed you what he can do. Running play straight ahead. They're going to have the first down. Ray Hudson is a good little one-two punch here. First they go with Beard, who is the, the big back, and then Hudson, who was only 194. Rashad Moore made the stop, but they'll move the chains again. And John Chavis's defense has to come on the field when the punt uh, was fumbled, and all of a sudden you're back in the mode of Alabama trying to score on you. You got to come up with a big play. One of the most underrated defensive coordinators in the country. John does a good job. Just under two and a half minutes to play. Here comes the option to the open side of the field. Watts going to be hit. No place to pitch it. Better put it away. And he's down at the 20-yard line, which is back to the line of scrimmage. Omari Hand on the tackle. And Reese Davis, what do you got for us? Well, Ron, next Saturday night, when you guys see the dogs against the Gators, Georgia can wrap up the SEC East. Taking on Kentucky this afternoon, David Green threw four touchdown passes, three of them to Terrence Edwards. Edwards into the house there, and Georgia rolls over Kentucky by a count of 52 to 24. And look what Auburn did to LSU. Created five turnovers, and they blitzed the Bayou Bengals 31-7. Well, this time next Saturday night, Mike, we will be in Jacksonville for the uh, cocktail party. Game between Florida and Georgia. I formation. Thanks to Beard this time. Gonna run. Watch at the 15 and he'll take it close to the 14 but they say down at the 15 yard line white side and more combining on the stop and now big down right here because I'm sure that the uh, cook friend would like to have seven rather than a field goal watch Santonio beard with the block there Ron and set that whole play up Tyler Watts scrambling for yardage Fulgham checks into the lineup Shaw Williams comes into the lineup It'll be third down, and the line to make for the Crimson Tide just barely inside the 10-yard line. They lead it 7-0, looking for more. Blitz coming right up the middle. They pick it up, and now it's been whistled down. Maybe delay a game. Boy, I think you're right. You talk about changing the play call from third and five to third and ten. You know, I don't know if it's because offenses have become so complex or what. Or the, the getting the signals in. I have never seen in one season so many delay of game penalties as we have had this year. I think you've hit both things. Signals take a long time to go in, and the quarterback takes a long time at the line of scrimmage to get his play called to change it. Santonio Beard is the only man in the backfield along with Watts. Good protection. Now it breaks down. He's hit, and his offensive lineman knocks him down. Wesley Britt backed into him, and Tyler had no place to go. That's counted as a sack, even though Britt knocked him down. Second time that they've gotten to him tonight, and now it's field goal time. Not a bad move by Tyler Watts not to throw the football because he couldn't get anything on it. Britt's right back in the backfield. Rashad Moore pushed him right into Tyler Watts. So Kyle Robinson will attempt a field goal. 
And that's going to be the end of the first quarter, so we'll have uh, an opportunity to uh, to think about it. Time out on the field. Alabama 7, Tennessee nothing, and a long field goal attempt when we come back. Alabama leads it as we uh, head into the second quarter. And this field goal attempt, Sam Collins is the holder. Nick Writings is uh, the long snapper. You can see Robinson, he has never attempted a, uh, a field goal in college. This is a formidable task right here, an effort of 46 yards. Seven of seven on extra points, but never a field goal attempt. Let's see how he does. Good pass, and his kick is whoo, short and to the left. He won't remember his first one. Well, he might remember no, it more I, than you think. I forget it. <laughs> a little sigh of relief as far as the volunteers are concerned, and particularly the young man who turned the ball over. Here's one more look at it. This doesn't follow through. But Larkins is the man who fumbled the ball, and he's the one who you see the sigh of relief on his face. On the 29, pressure right up the middle. This is uh, Fleming, and he will take it just over the 30-yard line. Let's take a look at the 1-800 call 18 game track. Bama scores in a backward pass, picked up. Dixon takes it 68 yards for the score. And the ball is fumbled here by Jabari Davis. The fumble here by Larkins. The wet football has really caused problems for the volunteers. And quite frankly, Mike, they are fortunate they're only down seven to nothing. Yeah. Four fumbles, two, uh, two uh, that they gave up, turnovers, and still seven nothing down. You take that. Now James Banks is in the ball game. He is uh, the backup quarterback. Lawson is there. He's going to take the snap. They're going to try to run an option with him, and he's going to be knocked out at the 25-yard line. McKay Lozier is there to spoil the play. And Carl Torbus talked about when Banks comes into the game, they expect James Banks to run the football. So they play run all the way. A missed block by Troy Fleming on Lozier. Well, as the night goes on, we'll talk more about James. What an outstanding athlete not only heavily recruited in football but uh, also heavily recruited in basketball but he's only going to play football here at Tennessee third down and very long they need the 39 straight up the middle of Tinsley Tinsley will take it out of the 30 and it improves their punting position anywhere anyway as Brooks Daniels makes the stop people are booing but I, I know what's going through Philip Fulmer's mind right now his defense is playing well don't go, give up another turnover. Your point is so well taken because just as Tennessee has fumbled the ball four times, who's to say that Alabama can't turn it over here in the second quarter? Colquitt, his longest on the evening, 48 yards. It's Shad Williams, the deep man. Boy, this is a dandy kick. Wow. Williams having to back up. It's over his head at the 10, and it'll go out of bounds. The six and a half yard line. How about that? Whoa, 63 yards. From booze to cheers <laughs> for the decision. They changed quickly. So let's take a timeout. 12:38 left until halftime. It remains tied seven to nothing. Casey Clausen on the far sideline. Uh, he's okay. I mean that 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 collarbone is still. Uh, got a problem that probably be another three weeks before that pain is gone. He's heavily strapped underneath the shoulder pads. We'll get a report from Adrian when they go back on offense so about his trip to the sideline. Sean Williams, the long setback in that Alabama backfield. He gets the handoff right at the middle, breaks it out, spins off. He's open at the 15, at the 20, and he's going to take it out to the 26-yard line. Remember what happened on the opening play in Fayetteville. They gave it to him on, what, what do you call the smoke draw? Smoke draw. It's a turn back blocking, and all you do is run to daylight, miss tackle in the secondary, spins, 
And 18 he, yards, a good spin right there. He had 80 yards, a touchdown on the opening play of the Arkansas game in Fayetteville. And right here, he gives them some terrific breathing room as the new line of scrimmage is out at the 25. Right at the middle, at the 30, now the 32. And here you come, see, with a totally different kind of back. Beard is not going to run away from you like Williams, but if you get close to him, he's going to... He's going to knock you down because he is a muscle kind of runner. Well, he's 225 pounds, 138 yards against Ole Miss, five touchdowns. That's a pretty good, pretty fair afternoon. Well, they bring him out of the ball game now, and they bring Shad Williams back in. The junior out of Andrews played initially at Texas Tech. And they give it to him, and he's going to be hit behind the line of scrimmage. Carlton Neal all over Shad Williams. Now one it's going to be third down. One of these teams is going to take over the running game. Uh, Alabama has a better chance of taking over this game with the run than does Tennessee because Tennessee hasn't established a running back. You look at Beard, rushes this year. Williams, seven touchdowns for Beard, two for Williams. And then throw in the Hudson, like you said. Beard, three carries, 21 yards, and he is back in the lineup. Now you see him moving up, so it's a pass play, yeah. probably. They bring him into protection, and that's what he's going to do. Going to go on top, and the ball tipped away, and now it's intercepted by Baker. Tipped by Eddie Moore, the leading tackler on this football team, and he reached up in a very deep drop and tipped the ball, and Baker was right there. As soon as the back from Alabama moved up, you knew that Tyler Watts was automatic in to the fade. Trying to get the fade route. Watch number 37 right here. Tip the ball. They tried to get the ball to Fulgham again. Eddie Moore with the tip. Eddie Moore with the tip. Baker with the reception. Well, Eddie Moore, we visited with him after practice on uh, Thursday. Extremely pumped about this game tonight as a senior. And he tipped it just now and helped Baker get his fourth interception of the season on first down to go with the running play. And it'll be maybe for a couple of yards as Cedric Houston is back in the lineup. And Reese Davis, let's check back with you. Well, if anyone is still doubting the Fighting Irish run, you ought to just take a look at what happened at the Dope this afternoon. Ryan Grant bursting through a hole and... Notre Dame opened up a can of whooping. This thing not as close as the score indicated as Notre Dame runs away from the Seminoles. They end up winning at 34-24. Miami had a fight for a while, but they survived and remain unbeaten. Hey, thanks, Reese. Uh, you have to be impressed with Notre Dame, and conversely, that's as bad as I've ever seen Florida State play. They couldn't have caught a coal today. I mean, they dropped everything offensively and defensively that came to them. But give the credit to the Irish. Under pressure. Now he dumps it off. It's Witten the tight end, and he'll have the first down. Wortham is the man who makes the tackle. Jason Witten, Mike, is quite a story. I asked him after practice the other day, I said, Jason, who did you almost go to school with? And he said, I almost went to school at Michigan. And I said, why did you change your mind? He said, they told me I was going to have to play tight end. And he said, I wanted to be either a linebacker or I wanted to be a defensive end. So I turned him down. Tennessee brought me here as a linebacker slash defensive end. And then I got that call. Come to the head coach's office. And Phillips said, we want you to play tight end. So he said, I'm a team guy. I'll do whatever. So Michigan missed out on him as a tight end. And I'll tell you, he is a great one. Only a junior. That ball's knocked down at the last moment. Tony Brown, the intended receiver. And now here comes the flag against Herschel Bolden. To add that story, uh, Randy Sanders was a coach from Tennessee recruiting with but he knew he was going to be a tight end. But well, he didn't tell him because no, he knew no, they would lose him no, it's because those, that's the reason Michigan lost That's him. one of those presents. Surprise. <laughs> Here's the penalty on Bowden against Tony Brown. Interesting. Uh, Jason Witten from a, a little town of 8,000. As you see, Clausen getting hit here, and that's one of the few times that he's been bumped tonight. Well, Tennessee can uh, stick this in the end zone, 
and that all the mistakes they've had in the first half, it would be big. Gerald Riggs, the highly touted freshman out of Chattanooga, checks so into the lineup. this is going to be a run. It's yeah. got to be a run because they don't oh, use him that much pass. in pass battles. Here, Clawson under pressure, runs out of harm's way. He wants to throw it. He doesn't want to run this thing, and he slides down. That's uh, Freddie Road who gets there to him. And let's check with Adrian down on the sideline. Adrian. Listen to the conversation between his uh, coordinator, Randy Sanders, and Casey, who claims, I don't have any more pain than I was practicing with all week. But Ron, keep something in mind here. He and Kelly Washington are roommates, and he told me they're a little winks of an eye, nod of a head, a little give of the heel, a little signal he'll give Washington because he was his primary receiver. Without him in there, we're giving up the man who accounts for about 20 yards per catch, and that has to affect his roommate, Casey Cross. Ron Riggs is in here to get this offense going right here at tailback. Well, he is the guy that they think can separate himself from the other backs. He gets the handoff, burst right up the middle, almost broke off a tackle. You know, take it inside the 25. Kendall Moorhead made the stop on him. And when you talk to every Tennessee coach, they say it's a matter of time till Gerald Riggs takes over, but he doesn't know the pass blocking as a freshman. He's going to go out of the game again. And it happens all over the country. <laughs> Has nothing to do with the kids' new, aptitude no. about football. New terminology, uh, new offense. All of a sudden, classes hit. Ladies walk around the campus. A lot of things going on. Deepest drive by Tennessee tonight as they scrimmage with a third down, and they need to take it to the 20-yard line. From the shotgun, good protection. Here's the pass, and he's got it complete. Diving catch by Tony Brown. Well, that was a great catch. You know, here's the situation with Clawson. We talk about his injury and how much pain he is in to throw the football as you look one more time as he throws to Brown. And you can see he's short-arming that ball. So, for all the, the people that are booing of why Phillip and Randy Sanders are using the offensive uh, calls that they're using, you got to have him because he's the veteran. But he cannot burn you deep. So I think you look for Tennessee to change. I mean, Alabama to change their defense a little bit in the second half if they're not already doing it right now. Gerald Riggs back in the ball game, Ron, at tailback. Pressure. Clausen is down. Great pressure by Moorhead. And that's the third time that they've gotten to the Tennessee quarterbacks tonight. This is a front. When you look at Moorhead, Kenny King, Jared Johnson, and Antoine Oldham, just a missed block right there on Moorhead. Kendall out of Memphis, Tennessee. That's 20 career sacks. Now Tinsley checks into the lineup, and Tennessee's going to call a timeout. Tinsley, a man that they like to throw to. But they're going to talk it over. Six minutes and 50 seconds left until halftime, and it remains. Alabama, 7 to nothing. We'll be right back. Go back to a rainy and damp night in Knoxville, Tennessee, but it's a matchup between Tennessee and Alabama, and it's always eventful. <laughs> you see, the, the bum weather has not affected everybody. They come out wearing their colors and they make a lot of noise. Second down and 18. Boston, here comes a blitz off the corner. They pick up one side and the screen pass incomplete as the pressure was coming from Wayne Bacon. You figured it was going to be a screen second and long yardage. Carl Torbus brings Bacon on the blitz and there's nobody out there to even receive the well, football. what happened I think if you look in the middle of the line Troy Fleming got grabbed by either the defensive end or the defensive tackle and he couldn't get out as uh, the defensive lineman recognized the play good immediately. defensive play if you don't get caught mm -hmm. Brody Croyle warming up on the uh, Alabama sideline it's Tony Brown in motion but they go with the draw play intentionally nothing hit immediately by Jared Johnson I think he fumbled the football too officials not making a signal now they say it's Alabama football 
fumbles Tennessee. Three have been recovered by Alabama. Derek Tinsley gets the ball knocked out. Just laying there, and all of a sudden, and that's picked Clawson. up by Derek Pope. Clawson, who makes the tackle. Johnson is the man who made the hit, and then the ball came out, and then you just see the players standing around. There comes the beanbag in, which means the ball has been turned over. So we'll take a timeout. Seven to nothing, Alabama. So Tinsley with the fumble, and uh, we got a better angle, Mike, and let's uh, talk about the Yeah, turnover. good call by the officials here. Derek Tinsley, you're going to see the ball pop out now. It's right there, popped out. Now the official sees that, but the players don't see it. All of a sudden, the ball squirts out. Nobody knows where it's at. Pope picks it up alertly. So Pope makes the recovery. Third time that the ball has been lost by Tennessee tonight and Brody Coyle comes in at quarterback spins out throws the pass Collins complete and he'll take it around the 30 ball is loose picked up by Tennessee it's a turnover and the Tennessee Volunteers will get it right back inside the 25 yard line Julian Battle with a big play for Tennessee out to Sam Collins. Battle does a nice job pulling it out. Jabril picks it up. Jabril Wilson uh, there to help out also. You see the battle picked it up and headed for the end zone line. Well, both teams giving each other a chance. <laughs> Jabari Davis is the tailback, and he gets the handoff as the flag comes down, and it's going to be very short yardage because he'll take it in the vicinity of the 20-yard line. Hard to run against this Alabama defense. Front four. Sloppy football game. Offside against uh, Alabama. Reese Davis, let's go back to you. All right, Ron, down in Kyle Field, Nebraska and Texas A&M locked up at 14 in the second quarter. Dustin Long continues to put up points to that Aggie offense, finding the senior tight end Greg Porter for the touchdown, and A&M's up 21-14, about to start the third quarter, and Stanford clinging to that two-point lead over the Bruins in the third. It's okay, Reese. Our situation uh, about to go under six minutes to play in this opening half, and it's been a defensive struggle. No offensive touchdowns as yet. The lone score came on a backwards pass picked up by Dixon of Alabama, and he took it 68 yards to score. Fleming bounces it outside, runs over one tackler, and he's very close to the yard marker for the first down as Petra comes over to make the hit. When you're not satisfied with your tailbacks, you move your fullback to the one-back set. Troy Fleming is that back. Tennessee's offense, 13 yards tonight. That's the rushing offense, not total offense, obviously. Gerald Riggs, the freshman out of Chattanooga, comes back into the lineup. Second down and very short. Clawson takes this one from under center. You see him just pitch it back to Riggs and is knocked out of bounds. He's close to the first down. I, I can't tell. Wayne Bacon and Wortham out there to make the stop. Mike on this play right here. Casey couldn't get out there. And that might be that reach that we were talking about. Our, our Riggs was a little far away yeah, from him. I think Riggs was a far away and he couldn't hand the ball off to him. So he just pitches it <laughs> underhand to him. Didn't look good, but uh, picked up the yardage. So it is a first down. And Witten and McClure, the two tight ends in the ball game. Try to run over here. Whitten in motion. We'll go with the running play, and uh, that's Troy Fleming. She's going to take it for three, maybe four yards. 
Ahmad Childers making a stop for the Crimson Tide. Ron, what to Tennessee's trying to do with two tight ends, and especially Jason Witten, is get them both on the same side to be a lead blocker for Troy Fleming. Had success on the left side, not too much success on that side. So Fleming is in the backfield. Jabari Davis is in the backfield. Keep an eye on the big fellow, Jason Witten, number one. And they give it to Davis, lead blocker. Tries to hurdle the man, he'll get to the six, and that's it, it'll be third down. Third down, it's still about five. Freddie Rode defensively for the Crimson Tide. Now here's Ron where you do look for Witten or the fade route. Now, Kelly Washington not in the ball game, his 6-4 frame. You missed the fade right here with him. Witten's very dangerous down here. Tensley checks into the lineup and watching Tennessee on their Thursday practices a couple of times this year. They like Tinsley scraping off the back of the big tight end or if Witten is open they get it to him. Well you think it's some kind of flood over here. Yeah. Wade in motion. Pressure. Throws it. Intercepted by Alabama in the end zone. Charles Jones. Pressure on Casey Clawson by McKay Washer. Got after Clawson. Boy, Ill real throw. force right there. We'll take a timeout. 3.16 left until halftime. And the offensive coordinator, Randy Sanders, really upset. Lee Corso. Future. So tonight's Aflac trivia question. Who was the last SEC player not from the University of Alabama to score five touchdowns in a game? Answer? Have it a little bit later on. Brody Coyle at quarterback. Santonio Beard is the man who was set seven yards behind him. in motion and here comes the option oh they are all over this immediately Amari hand comes across and just makes that one's uh-uh we're not we're not doing that stuff Omari hand one of three team captains on this football team leading this defense they are trying to make a play because both defenses Alabama and Tennessee have controlled this football game what total yards in this thing Alabama 61 and they lost yards on that one Tennessee with 91. These defenses above and beyond as far as the call of duty tonight. Here comes the blitz off the corner. It's Moore. Flushes him out of the pocket. Drills the pass and has it complete at the 27 to Luke. And he will fight his way out over the 30-yard line. And because of that second effort, he got a first down. Neal on the tackle, gain of 14. Alabama on this play may have got away with the hold. We're going to see number 31, Greg McLean, pushing the defensive in. Well, that's Eddie Moore actually coming from that. Yeah, with the linebacker yeah. with his left hand. And uh, the official where he was standing over here couldn't see it. So it's another Alabama first down. Coyle straight ahead with the handoff, and it's Beard trying to just move the pile, and he will. He push to the 34. Kenyon Whiteside defensively. You see, we're about to go under two minutes left until halftime. Mike at halftime, adjustments by both teams. What would you think the conversations would be? Boy, with Tennessee is trying to find a way to get a running game. With Alabama, I think they've got to be able to throw the ball a little bit better than they've thrown in the first half. They've got some things, uh, they, they get some big plays with throwback uh, plays to the tight end and wide receivers. We haven't seen much of that in the first half. Option pass. Got a man, and it's overthrown Johnson. Clint Johnson, the intended receiver. And Reese Davis, let's check with you. All right, Ryan, coming up on the Saturn Halftime Report, we get you up to date on the World Series, see if the baseball season will end tonight. We'll also check in on dog days in the SEC as Georgia continues to roll on, and it apparently is quite easy being green, at least if you are from Notre Dame. The Irish make a statement. We'll see you at halftime. Okay, Reese. 7-0 Alabama. 
controlling the football. And I think Coach Francione would just want to make sure they don't turn it over. Love to have a first down, but if they don't, this pass. Got him completed. He's got the first down and a whole lot more to Fletcher. Fletcher, 25, 20, 15, first and goal, Alabama. Inside the 10-yard line, Greer finally caught him after a 56-yard game. Well, Zach Fletcher is on the receiving end of a bullet from Bodie Paul. This is a well-thrown football against Jabari Greer. And then the yardage after catch. Then Zach Fletcher knows they're going to catch him. He double punches the football not to get stripped. Now, from where they have spotted him, actually, it's not inside the 10. It is on the 10. So it would appear that by inches they might be able to pick up the first down, although the chains have not been set. Now they say first and goal. Option play. Beard turns it up at the five, and he will score. Santonio Beard from 10 yards out. Justin Smiley, the left guard, with a really good block on the play. And that 14 points, if they tackle on this extra point, is big when Tennessee is struggling like they are on the offense. Yeah, and with the, the way that the way that Alabama plays defense, you're exactly right. Volunteer is going to have to come up with a playmaker, a big play guy in the second half. Robinson tries for his eighth extra point in a row, and he got it. So we'll take a break as you look at Beard from 10 yards out. He makes it 14 to nothing. We'll take a timeout. 52 seconds left until halftime. The uh, light rain continues to fall here in Knoxville. But uh, the folks from Tuscaloosa up and making a lot of racket. Their ball club on top, 14 to nothing. But as Mike pointed out, the way their defense is playing and with the struggles Tennessee is having on offense, particularly with Clawson not being close to 100%, it really makes a mountain to climb for the Volunteers. But their defense is going to have to step up along with their offense. Maybe they get a turnover and go for a touchdown as Alabama got help from their defense. Rody Croyle comes in and engineers that attack. See if Corey Larkins uh, can get something in special teams for Tennessee. Michael Ziefel will kick it off. And it's going to be a pooch kick. Going to be taken at the 18-yard line. 30, 35, 40. Zeeple's the only man who can get him. And it's Jones. Jones trying to get a block. 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Tennessee. 87 yards, Mark Jones. Well, that's what I was saying. They've got to have somebody to step up and make a big play. And there you go. All of a sudden, momentum goes away from Alabama as they go to halftime and back to Tennessee. Special teams in the state. You pooch the kick, but the coverage was not good. Almost like they gave up on the coverage. Alex Walls, who has had problems with a groin injury, but he warmed up tonight, and the coaches said if we saw him, that means we think he's feeling okay. He is back in to attempt the extra point. Ball is down, and his kick is up and through. And now with 39 seconds showing on the clock until halftime, take another look. 87 yards by Jones. You see the break right here. They've just a wide open range. Now he makes the move there. There's only one man who gets a good block. That was Jabril Wilson, who was out front. And number eight opened that up. Philip Fulmer uh, with a little hug. For Jones. I can understand why. <laughs> I, I haven't seen any offense. Well, the answer to tonight's Affleck trivia question, who was the last SEC player not from the University of Alabama to score five touchdowns in a ball game? And that answer is Kevin Falk against Kentucky 1997. And Santonio San Beard last week. Against Ole Miss had five. five. 
Boy, a big mistake by Alabama on kick coverage teams. It got this Tennessee football team in the crowd back in this ball game. Yep, got them enthused. This time next Saturday night, a reminder, Mike and Adrian and I will be down in Jacksonville for the annual cocktail party, the matchup between the, the Florida Gators and the Georgia Bulldogs, who, uh, of course, are still undefeated. Triandos Luke, along with uh, Ray Hudson, are the two deep people for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Newman will kick it off, and we'll see if the Crimson Tide can come up with an answer to what Jones just had, a return of 87 for a touchdown. the answer kick it out of the end zone he's going to try to return it this is Luke from five yards deep and the flag comes from way off the pace and we're going to see one quarterback sneak and both those coaching staffs got a lot of work to do at halftime that's going to be blocking the back against uh, Alabama <laughs> Well, a reminder, Wednesday night, uh, college football on ESPN 2, 7.30 Eastern. It's a Carpenter USA rivalry. Derek Nixon, Southern Miss, take it on TCU. Then on Thursday, on ESPN 7.30 Eastern, it's a Mountain West showdown. Colorado State visits Chance Parrish and the 19th-ranked Air Force Falcons. I'm looking forward to Southern Miss TCU. TCU, a very fine football team, lost their opener to Cincinnati in at the lead. And, uh, yeah, and uh, they are very active on defense. Derek Nix, Southern Miss, great back. Ian Rush. Talked to Coach Francione yesterday after the walkthrough about that. He said, I want to make sure I tell everybody, out in Fort Worth, hello. Horn Frogs with that only loss, the first game of the year. Here comes a draw play to Shot Williams. Not much there, and just like Mike said, I think they'll head toward the locker room and let this clock run down. Whiteside was there to make the tackle. 19 seconds, and now 18 seconds. And now Alabama just looking up at the clock. They look over the sideline, and everybody's moving, so they head to the locker room. So it's halftime at our score, Alabama 14 and Tennessee 7. Now here's Reese Davis with the Saturn Halftime Report. Well, Ron, Alabama and Tennessee have been playing football for over a second. A little bit different, but this one is still again different. Uh, almost boring at times, but good defense. But so many m mistakes and turnovers. Yeah, sloppy game, Ron. And I really believe that the team that runs in the second half is going to win this game. Here you see some of the sloppiness you were talking about. Casey Clawson with the interception. Randy Sanders, the offensive coordinator. Frustration. Then Alabama takes the ball down Beard with the touchdown. And then Tennessee gets life because Mark Jones returns the kickoff, the pooch kick for a touchdown. So we'll see if that carries over in the second half. Boy, Jones with that huge return. In case you were not with us in the first half, this man, Kelly Washington, unable to play tonight two weeks ago against Georgia he suffered a concussion and the doctors have continued to watch him very closely and quite frankly what happened is he was not cleared by the doctors and Phil Fulmer told Adrian uh, at the very beginning of the ball game tonight we will never put a kid's health in jeopardy if there's any question we simply won't blame and that's the case with Kelly here tonight kick off to the five yard line this is Larkins and he'll take it back to the 20. And speaking of Adrian, let's go down to the sideline. What do you got, big guy? Coming out of the Alabama tunnel, Dennis Francione tells me we just wanted Brody Coyle in there to get his feet wet, literally on this soggy field, Ron. We have all the confidence in the world in Tyler Watts and that right foot of his. Not much pain at all. Does he have to throw the ball to win this game in the second half? Not necessarily. He thinks the team that runs the ball the best, and that's Alabama right now, is going to win. He just does uh, realize and admit that defense has to keep on playing the way they are, contain Casey Clawson. Well, their case, they're certainly capable of doing that. Jabari Davis is the tailback. But they'll go with the pass. They put the pressure on, and the pass is caught at the 34-yard line by Montrell Jones. One thing I think you'll see in the second half is more downfield throws. Game track brought to you by 1-800-CALL-ATT. 
Alabama points off turnovers. And here they get it with Beard from 10 yards out, but then the special teams and a touchdown. And Jones, 87 yards, taking it to the house. And that made it a 14 to 7 ball game and got the Volunteers right back in it. Davis has five, has ten, counted off at ten and a half. And it'll be Odom who makes the tackle, but that is, what, the best run from scrimmage that uh, the Volunteers have had tonight. Yeah, Jabari Davis, the leading rusher on this football team, averaging almost five yards a carry. A lot of coaches think he's more a fullback type. Not a breakaway runner, but we saw him break away against Arkansas. 43 yards against Arkansas. He took one into the end zone, and it turned out to be a very, very large play in the game. When you look at the rushing yardage now, 68 and 29. This is Davis. But boy, Alabama does an outstanding job of stringing it out. Freddie Rode finally made the tackle, but contained on the outside was perfect. And then they just closed it off. Kenny King was there as well. What do you see here in his first 30 minutes, Mike? Well, the turnovers and two things, 19 yards rushing for for Tennessee and then four turnovers two turner turnovers here I can't say it it's so bad uh, and then both teams not being able to convert on third down both teams one of six and Jabari Davis just limped off Cedric Houston has come into the backfield for the volunteers Torbis moving his uh, defensive players around. He got a blitz off the corner, and the pass is complete. And that's Montrell Jones gets by the first man, knocked out of bounds at the 45-yard line. That is a gain of 14 at a first down. Odom finally making the tackle. You're looking for somebody to step up. Kelly Washington not in the ball game. Maybe it's Montrell Jones, a sophomore, with the catch. Montreal is out of Louisville Mail High School. Lawson, 9 of 15. Averaging 11 yards per throw, but the way he's having to endure pain, that's understandable. Quick and short. And that ball should have been caught right there by Troy Fleming. And it went right off his fingertips as he headed out of bounds. Would have been a short gain, but still, Casey has had several balls that have been dropped tonight. And Tennessee again on first down when you, they're averaging 2.1 yards on first down. So not a lot of success. Now they're at second and 10 again. Well, Jabari Davis obviously is better. He limped off a moment ago, but he's back into the lineup uh, at tailback. The pitch to Davis. They seal the outside. He turns the corner. 40, 35, and that's a good open field tackle by Charles Jones. Otherwise, he had a lot of space in front of him. It's a gain of 11. You're exactly right. They sealed the corner all right. There's nobody from Alabama. Everybody gets blocked down on. Jabari Davis gets outside, picks up another first down. Good adjustment so far by Randy Sanders. Coming out, short passing game. Tossing the football, trying different formations against the Tide. Jabari out of Stone Mountain, Georgia, which of course is just outside of uh, Atlanta. Tennessee rushing 19 yards first half, 19 yards on this drive alone. Houston back in the lineup. Here comes the pressure. The screen pass almost intercepted. And Clawson got set down hard. Jared Johnson. Jared Johnson has a great motor and a wonderful attitude, and the coaches really, really like how hard he plays. Yeah, he's the SEC active sack leader. Put pressure on Casey Clawson. Second down and 10. Clawson now with, a, with an audible. As you can see, boy, Alabama's got a lot of defenders very close to the line of scrimmage. Ball is tipped, and it's intercepted by Childress. Childress going to be caught from behind, and it's still another turnover as Bacon tipped the ball, and Childress the benefactor as he takes the return back across midfield. Wayne Bacon with a big play. 
16 career starts. That strong safety tips that football. Childress, a defensive lineman dream. 6'7", 345 pound running back. Boy, that's big. Tennessee had a drive going. You could see how high Bacon was off the ground, and he tipped it. First down and great field position at the 40 as Greg McLean gets the handoff and it'll go for short yardage. We talked about off the top of the telecast this offensive line for the Alabama Crimson Tide. They have gotten better and better and they are very physical. But the thing that they'd like to overcome, Justin Smiley probably said it best of all. They led the SEC in rushing last year, but they also gave up 23 sacks, which led the SEC. And they say, we don't want to be the leading rushing team if we can't protect our quarterback. Second down and long for the Crimson Tide. Here comes the option. Flag is down. They turn the corner for just a moment. And now let's see what that flag is all about. His beard was tackled after a very short game. Eddie Moore, who's been all over the place tonight, was there to make the tackle. It's offside on Tennessee. But adding to what you said about the offensive line, what Dennis Franchoni asked of his offense, not great drop back passing game. So you don't have to drop back and pass, protect. They're always coming off the ball in the run game, the option game, the play action game. So they really fit uh, the aggressive style that you talk about. So now Croyle at quarterback, the change of pace. And if you're John Chavis, now you got a different kind of headache. You figure he's going to come right in and throw. Short drop, play action, under pressure, and Tennessee got him, Eddie Moore. And the ball, Beard has it, and goes inside the 20. I look down at my plate. I think he fumbled the football, and the ball was picked up. John Chavis knew when the young quarterback came in the ball game, he was coming in to throw the football. And Tennessee gets a personal foul to tack on. John Chavis looking at the screen. Oh, he's down. That, that, oh, my goodness. We just saw what they're booing about. Look at this right here. Right there. He is down. I mean, that, there's no question about that. Oh, wow. And John Chavis not happy. Philip Fulmer not happy. This is a... Crimson Tide doesn't need any help. But they've got a huge break, huge break right there. In the old days, you might see a holding call right now. Tyler Watts gives it to Beard. Hit it to line of scrimmage. He's going to be knocked down for a yard and a half, maybe a two-yard loss. Neal is there to make the tackle. Let's take a look again. Uh, just no question yeah, about this. No doubt. Right there, he is down. And he had, and Beard had his knee on the ground as well. <laughs> and the reaction by John Chavis. I mean, that's a double bad call. That's where you, if you're a basketball coach, you take a technical right now to get, to get the referee over to talk to, or use a timeout. But it's not going to do any good. Now there are flags of people moving all over the place. Watch. Alabama going to run the option. Alabama moved the offensive line. Looked like a late snap from the center. This crowd still booing these officials. Well, I can't really blame them. <laughs> this is where, like you talked about, Ron, as a player and a coach, you've got to get by it right now. Let the fans boo. You've got to stop Alabama. You got to force the three-point attempt. Just gone under ten and a half minutes to play third quarter. Watch this time from a shotgun formation. 
They roll the pocket. Good protection. Now he wants to run, and he is, whoa, he's whacked hard at the line of scrimmage. Moore and Wilson coming up to make the hit from the linebacker spot and also the secondary. The Tennessee defensive players are encouraging these fans. Uh, Tyler Watts rolling out wisely again. Nobody open. The offensive linemen don't see him scrambling. They're standing around. Wilson makes the tackle. Third down. wants a timeout. So let's take a break. 9.32 left, third quarter. Alabama, 14 to 7. Well, <laughs> this lady is uh, very calm right here, but she's about the only one of the over 107,000 people here. That's one of the most raucous timeouts, Mike, I've ever seen. And here comes the crowd back. They feel as though they got the shaft twice and quite frankly, they did. It's third down and goal for the Crimson Tide at the 15. Gonna run a big opening in the middle. Whoa, he gets whacked hard as he gets to the 10-yard line. Carlton Neal, the first man to get there. Also, Greer coming up from the secondary, or Jabril Wilson. Ron, I felt like with Tyler Watts in the football game, it was gonna be a run. Now, they had a pass play called, but Tyler Watts did the wise thing, cut the ball down, get it in good field goal position. Twenty seven yard attempt by Kyle Robinson. And he got it. Timeout. 842 left of the third. New score, Alabama, 17 to 7. Okay, just a moment ago, after the field goal was kicked, Philip Fulmer summons the side judge over, and what he's saying is, you got us. The quarterback was down, and when we show you the replay, you'll see two mistakes on the play. Quarterback is down right here. Look at Beard's knee. His knee is still on the ground, and the ball is being pitched to them. So even if he was not down, he's down even farther back. Both plays were wrong. Pro football. <laughs> Which pro football? <laughs> I think Maybe it's uh, rugby over in Russia, <laughs> where you can have your knee down. Zeeville to kick it off. Well, they pooched the last one, and Jones took it 87 yards. They will pooch us. See what, though, he's uh, kicked it out of bounds, so they're going to get it at the 35-yard line. Now, here comes a flag way downfield and a second flag. Yeah, this, this is going to be interesting whether they call this on Tennessee or not. It's number 98 from Tennessee. Harrelson. And number six for Alabama, Derek Pope. Yeah. And I, yeah. These guys don't have a lot of friends in this building. It was holding, it looked like. Let's, let's see what the official is going to look at. Here's Harrelson pulling Pope's jersey. We have all sides against the kicking team. We have holding against the receiving team. And a dead ball foul against the receiving team. the uh, swing by uh, Derek Pope after being held by Harrelson. It's almost like good night, Irene. Now the Alabama coaches uh, 
talking with Pope, who has come to the sideline. You see uh, Tank Connolly, the longtime equipment man, there standing in the foreground. Well, they kick again, right? The offsides by the kicking team, the holding by the receiving team, offset. However, the dead ball personal foul by the kicking team will be assessed. 20 yard line. Kick. So, so Tennessee took a while. Adrian, let's check with you down on the sideline. Quickly before the second kick, Fulmer wanted to see the referee. The side judge told him you have one play to argue your point. Well, he couldn't do it because by the time they got down after that double questionable call, they're already lined up. I got to tell you, incidentally, Ron, during the booing and the cheering and everything else, that was the loudest crowd I have ever heard in college <laughs> football down here in the surface of the yeah, I, it. Yeah, uh, we could tell that folks were a little chapped. <laughs> it, it, the attendance tonight is uh, the sixth largest in school history. 107, 722, 107,722. And a lot of those people are referees tonight. <laughs> well, the penalty moves it back to the 20 yard line. So Tennessee stands to get decent field position. Zephyr again will kick it off. And according to where the deep men have lined up, Tennessee obviously has scouted him enough to say, hey, he pulls the ball. They he, figure he's going to kick uh -huh. across the body to that side. Try to pin him inside the hash. Boy, he gets a dandy kickoff. It's going to come down at the 13-yard line. It's Larkins. And Larkins finds a little bit of a seam and goes down at the 37-yard line. Harper is the man who made the tackle. Well, Wednesday night is college football on ESPN2 at 8 o'clock Eastern. Derek Nix in uh, Southern Mississippi take on the TCU and the Horn Frogs. The winner of the game will have a clear shot at Conference USA's title. For more, log on to ESPN.com, your home for college football on the Internet. And you know what? Quite frankly, my time has uh, cut off there, and I couldn't read. I said 8 o'clock Eastern. It, let's double check that, okay? 7.30 Eastern time, so 6.30 in Fort Worth. And one of those two teams might end up in Mobile, the GMAC Bowl. That's so, right. Uh, Penalty again there. This may this got to go on Tennessee because there was movement shifting. Philip Homer's seen too too much in yellow linen. That was a dead ball, false start by the offense. Penalty is five yards from the previous spot, followed by first down. To 15, Tennessee. Cedric Houston in the ball game at tailback. Coach Fulmer, I'm sure, not upset with the officials on that. He's upset with his team for not being focused enough and getting another silly five-yard penalty on the offense. Pressure on Clawson, and he's going to be sacked immediately by Johnson. Reese Davis, let's go back and check with you. All right, Ryan, down at Kyle Field, the Huskers showing why they have pride to have the end on the side of their headgear. Jamal Lord to, to, to David Horn dances into the end zone, and the Huskers back to within three of the Aggies at 31-28. So, well, the Huskers uh, trying to fight back. I think they go home to play host to Texas next week. Yeah, they have packed it in. Uh, still fighting on. Lawson swings this one out, got it complete, but Houston can really go nowhere. Ron, he's playing with a cast on his hand. Houston was hurt. Into that thumb, what, the week before the Arkansas game, because we didn't get to see him then. Yeah, 28 carries coming in, into this game, almost averaging seven yards a carry, but he, he has not played very much in the last three weeks. This is where you just hang it up here. Not many plays in the playbook, third 24. Blossom's <laughs> gonna go on top. 
And it's overthrown at the 45-yard line. Tony Brown was the closest man to it. And the balls will have to give it back. They'll have to punt it. And in fairness, that's where you miss Kelly Washington. Casey Clawson just rearing back, throwing the football to Tony Brown. He gets behind the defensive backs, but the ball well overthrown. Kelly on the sideline. Alabama's can come very close to blocking a punt. Holcomb gets a good pass, and here's his boot. Good high coverage spiral. Going to turn over now. Fair catch is called for and made it to 26 by Shad Williams. 51 yards and a kick and nothing on a return. We'll take a break. 17 to 7, Alabama. Knoxville, 17 to 7. Crowd has calmed down a little bit after the uh, the calls that they thought were missed that led to a field goal by Alabama. And here comes the Crimson Tide offense trotting out on the field. I think you're going to see more passing out of Alabama now. They got a 10-point lead. They're bringing in the young quarterback. You can see some more throwing. Before that, we're going to have a five-yard penalty. Evan Mathis, sophomore out of Homewood, came out of a stance. That was a dead ball, ball start by the offense. Penalties five yards from the previous spot, followed by first down. Well, I think he just showed me uh, his his board, and that's ten penalties uh, against Alabama. Against Alabama. Both teams have had their problems with it tonight. Beard bounces it outside, and he gets flipped at the line of scrimmage by Battle. That's a great tackle by Julian Battle. Santonio Beard comes outside. Julian Battle comes in on contain. You're going to see him make this tackle. That's what you want a corner to do. Makes the low tackle on the big back, Beard. Second and 13. Option pass, pressure, gets by. And now he swings it out, and nobody is in coverage on Beard. Santonio, across midfield, is inside the 45-yard line. Broken play, and it went for 35 yards. Yeah, Keon Whiteside pressures. Antonio Beard. Here's the red line. It's the line of scrimmage, so you can tell how close he gets to the line of scrimmage. Not even close. And Beard wide open. Alabama had three plays over 15 yards. That may be their fourth. John Chambers said, if they get five, we're in trouble. Shad Williams comes in a tailback. And here comes the reverse. Going to throw the ball. Now he's going to run. 35, 30, 25 at the 18-yard line. Ward is finally stopped after a 24-yard game. Sometimes you can't draw a play up. That was supposed to be a pass all the way. Tennessee played it well. Thurman Ward has all kind of time. He gets the reverse. He looks. He says, oh, not open. Now I'm going to run. All of a sudden, his lineman watching go by, and he runs down the football field. No one can tackle him. This is Beard. Turns it upfield. Going to have a three tough yards. Robert Peace, well, the middle linebacker, comes over to make the tackle. Alabama's getting ready to put a stake in the heart of uh, the balls right here if they can go in for seven. Because with the Bama defense and the way the offense Tennessee is struggling you cannot allow another touchdown <laughs> 
two tight ends. Play action by Coyle. Drills the pass, and it's incomplete, and here comes a marker. Gabriel Wilson trying to defend against Clint Johnson. Pretty good one-two punch at quarterback by Alabama. You talked about it. They come in with a running style quarterback. It's got great brains at the line of scrimmage. And then the young quarterback comes in and he can bullet the football. Clint Johnson with Wilson on his back. It's a pretty good call. So the ball goes bounding out the back of the checkerboard end zone. But they're going to set up shop with the uh, penalty. It's going to be stepped off to the Tyler Watts, six yard line. Tyler Watts, Ron, came into the ball game. I, I would be looking if I was Tennessee for an option play here. Something to Beard. Now the ball is being placed just inside the two. Now they're pushing it back about a half yard. I believe that this young man right here is going to get this football either on an option or a power play. From Nashville, they'd like to get him in the end zone. Santonio San Beard, only a junior. Here's the option, and Carl will walk in. Touchdown, Alabama. Tyler Watts, I beg your pardon. Tyler had come to the ball game, but just as Mike said, look for the run. Theo Sanders with a good block to the outside, and Watts takes it in for six. When Tyler Watts came in the football game. You almost figure it's going to be an option. A pitch, two beard, or take it in yourself. Robinson in the ball game to attempt the extra point. As we mentioned back at the first half, they tried him last week against Ole Miss, and he was perfect. Six of six. So he has handled the chores this evening. Good pass, and he knocks this one right down the middle. So with four minutes, 14 seconds left in the third quarter, brand new score. Alabama now by 17. Back in Knoxville, Tennessee. The 2002 matchup between the Alabama Crimson Tide and the Tennessee Volunteers. And these games always have their own strange story. And this one tonight, it's been turnovers. The Volunteers have just given it away way too much. Watts, two-yard touchdown run, five plays, 74 yards. Boy, that one-two combination right there just gives fits to defensive coordinators because, as Mike said, they are so very different. Add, add to that good running backs yep. and a very good offensive line. Tough offense to prepare for in one week. Well, let's see if uh, Zippo can kick this one into the end zone. Larkins up two yards deep, and he'll return it. Larkins on the return. Well, it's Monday Night Countdown, delivered by UPS at 7.30 Eastern. Join Stuart Scott and the best in the business for all the news from Week 8 in the NFL. And at 9 o'clock, it's ABC Monday Night Football. Al Michaels and John Madder in Philadelphia. And it's a showdown from the NFC East. So, the Giants and the Eagles, 9 o'clock Eastern on Monday. Ron, you remember Will Peterson, the corner, was started in Michigan, went to Western Illinois. He's a Giants corner, star of the future. Reverse. This is Wade. Flag is down. Wade turns the corner. 40, 45, and then the little guy is knocked down by Derek Pope. Just disappeared. 21 yards on the play, but now let's check the marker. So count to 21 and forget the five yard penalty against Alabama for offsides. Jonathan Wade, uh, Randy Sanders was talking about the freshman. 
wide receiver they said they wanted to get him the ball at that time we didn't know Kelly Washington was not going to play well they miss him tonight he's good for a big play but he's also good for the double team and you can run the ball better when they're doubling him and also Witten could look to right. catch eight or ten balls to tight end. Quick pass, got it completed to 43 to Jones. And Reese Davis will go back to you for a moment. All right, Ron, and the Huskers have come all the way back. Once down 31-14 to Texas A&M in Kyle Field. Jamal Lord with a great pitch to David Horn, who goes in again. And Nebraska's on top, 35-31. to Just over 10 minutes left to go in that game. Wisconsin has gone into East Lansing, a Michigan State team in disarray, getting hammered at home, 42-24. to Boy, that's a team have. with a lot of talent too, Michigan State. Preseason, uh, a lot of people talking about them winning the Big Ten. Clawson, right across the middle, that is a really nice catch by Tony Brown. The defender was, he couldn't be in any closer without having pass interference, which it wasn't. He had him perfectly defended. Charles Jones, but he couldn't knock the ball away. Casey Clawson with the throw under pressure. Kendall, Kendall Moorhead, Moorhead was yeah. given the pressure. Nice completion to Tony Brown. Tony a sophomore out of the Lauderdale Lakes, Florida. That's Tinsley that they send in motion out of the backfield. And they give it to Fleming. And a flag is down. It'll be very short yardage. Ryan's on the tackle. He might have the first down from where... That might be offside again. No, they're counting the, uh, maybe the counting the uh, people Tennessee had on the offensive line. Randy Sanders pleading his case saying that they did have seven men on the line of scrimmage but uh, that uh, is not going to do any good because the penalty has already been stepped off and it's second down now and long. Blossom sings this pass incomplete looking for James Banks. And a flag is down at the 40. Charlie Pepper had the defensive uh, call on that play. Munoz might have moved on that play, the left tackle. That was a dead ball. False start by the offense. Penalty is five yards from the previous spot. Still second down. Philip Fulmer seen so many penalties tonight. There's Anthony. Michael's uh, dad. Blossom from the shotgun steps up. Here comes the pressure. Now throws and got it long. Got the man. It is caught first and ten inside the 15. Jonathan Wade. What made that play was Casey Clawson being able to move in the pocket, step up, make the throw. 32 yards in the pass play. And now the new line of scrimmage is at the 13. What a wonderful route by Jonathan Wade, too. A stop and go. Finally, the tackle by Charles Jones, but uh, Tennessee in business. This is Scott and Leonard Scott at the five. He will score. 
13 yards. McKay Lozier has a shot, Ron, right here. He's got to tackle. Once he misses that tackle, Munoz picks up a block. Leonard Scott's in the end zone. Yeah, the rest of the defenders in that uh, seven area really kind of relaxed for a second. They thought he already had him for a loss. This is Walls to attempt the extra point. And he's got it. So with 146 left in the third, it's back to a 10-point ball game. And we'll hold it right here. Alabama now 24 to 14 over Tennessee. Good play call. Good defense, too. Just when you don't make the tackle and you give a guy like Scott, who's got great speed, track speed, the corner, you're going to put points on the board. Munoz, as Mike said, throwing uh, one of the paving blocks on that play. Well, we welcome the airmen assigned to the Pacific Air Forces, watching the telecast on American Forces Network, including the Eagle Airlifters of the 36th Airlift Squadron at Yokota Air Base in Japan, who fly C-130 missions throughout the Pacific region. Mike, it was interesting. Thursday when I arrived here in Knoxville, I ran into a young man who was on leave who had been in the Pacific, and he commented, he said, be sure and tell Mike hello. Uh, and, and he said, and Adrian, because he said, we watch the games every week. He's going to be uh, on leave for about three weeks, I think, here in the States. And, uh, and, and it felt good to talk to one of those guys. They were in a hurry. They were trying to find their luggage and get on with their family. But he said, it is really just a saving thing to be able to see Sports Center and see ball games over there, and they watch it religiously. People in this country, when we walk in airports and we see service people, policemen, firemen, we ought to all thank them for what they do because they do so much. Well, you're right. They're the true heroes. Philip Newman prepares to kick it off. They had 146 left in the third quarter. And a 10-point ball game. Okay, 10-point ball game, and as far as momentum in this one, obviously Alabama still has some momentum, but uh, if you're Tennessee, what, you just got to get your defense to come up with a turnover? Here's the one thing that hasn't happened. No one has run the ball, so the clock's not going to run. Yeah. So Tennessee's still in this football game. If their defense can uh, get a stop here, get the ball back, uh, they're right back in this football game. Alabama has not proved they can run the ball and run this clock out. It has been a very long third quarter. We still got 140 left. You see the rushing yards, 102 now for Alabama, Tennessee with 65. Here comes the option. Pitch back to Beard. Santonio still fighting, gonna take it out over the 25-yard line. Got the corner turn, and he's a load to bring down once he does that. Now, he, you're right, he got a great block from Greg McLean number 31 the wide receiver and I like these wide receivers for Alabama no name crew but they block downfield in the running game they really give you effort Sanders Johnson McLean Fletcher Luke Collins Ray Hudson comes into the lineup as Antonio Beard asked for a breather from the sideline shot Williams in the backfield as well to the open side and they pitch it to Williams 30 35 at the 40 and he is neck tied at the 44 yard line by Julian Battle gain of 18. Now we talked about whether you can move the clock and that's what Dennis Franchoni is trying to do right now. He's trying to with Tyler Watts in the football game to check off at the line of scrimmage to the right run to get this clock moving and get this game over. We 
we've got a flag over here right in front of the Alabama bench. Uh, it's I talked about I talked to Charlie North, who's the director of football operations, and he said his job. I said, Charlie, what do you do? He said, I'm the get back coach. I I get him back. I said, he said, I'm all SEC. He's not anymore. <laughs> he got a warning tonight, so he's down. He's about seventh in the SEC. Charlie North, a great, great guy, great coach. Coach with uh, Barry Switzer at Oklahoma. First and ten, Alabama from their own 44. Shot Williams caught by the jersey. He's still going to have five yards in the play, grabbed by Eddie Moore. Here's why Tyler Watts is so important to this offense because he checks for the right runs. Here's Eddie Moore, the linebacker, moves and then makes the collar tackle on Williams. Two seconds down to one, and that's. The final second of the third quarter. So we'll take a timeout. And when we return, the final 15 from Knoxville in the 2002 edition for Alabama for Tennessee is 0 7 and 7. At first touchdown by Alabama was actually a defensive touchdown. As a, a backward pass was picked up by Gerald Dixon, and he returned it 68 yards for the score. Santonio Beard. They fake it to him and then they go straight ahead with the run. It's going to go good for the first down to the 45 yard line. Good hustle by Tyler Watts. And here is a look at the game track brought to you by 1 800 Call ATT. Disputed call. Quarterback down. So is the running back. The little former simply cannot believe it. Ooh, that meat in that sandwich. And then Tennessee comes right back. And they punch it into the end zone. 24 to 14. That's how we stand right now. Yeah, that sandwich wasn't any good. <laughs> he may taste that one all night. <laughs> He's going to taste it all year. <laughs> uh, deep draw, Beard bounces to the outside. 40, 35, and down to the 34-yard line. He's going to look at that and say, whoa, if I cut back inside, I might have taken it to the end zone. He ran right into the tackler. Gate of 11. We talked about Ken, Alabama. They haven't so far killed the clock and run the football. Well, they're showing you, you and I and everybody else in America, they can run the football and protect the lead. Yeah. You can see now why he did bounce it to the outside, though, because it was backside help coming from the uh, Tennessee defenders. But it did move the chains. Beard. Hit at the line of scrimmage. He'll fight his way forward for one before Rashad Moore comes over to make the tackle. There's something about when you're in Nashville and you grew up and and you all of a sudden you go to Alabama and you come back and play in this state. You want to save your best. You want to do your best. You got a lot of tickets here. A lot of home uh, people from Nashville are here to see Santonio Beard. He's had a pretty good evening. Now a timeout called by Tennessee. Ten men on the field. So we'll take a break. 13-23 left in the ball game. Alabama by 10. Alabama 24 to 14 and here's a note of interest last year's Alabama Tennessee game had no turnovers tonight we have had seven five by Tennessee two by Alabama second down and long option play 
And he's going to hold on to it. Moore comes over to make the tackle on him, and he'll take it down to the 27. Adrian Karsten, back to you. Injury report to one of the gentlemen in the black and white shirts, Wally Huff. The umpire has left the game with the stomach flu. He seemed to be running okay in the first half, but come halftime, he was having a lot of trouble. Actually checked in with both team doctors, had to leave the game. So they've rotated two or three of the officials. They always have one or two extra on the field, as Mike knows. So we wish the best to Wally Huff. Okay, Adrian, thanks. Third down, they need to take it to the 24-yard line. Shad Williams right up the middle. Boy, he gets banged hard and still keeps going inside the 20 to the 19. Rashad Moore with the tackle. He got belted by a Maury hand and just kept on motoring right by him. Here, here's why Tyler Watts is so good. He's looking. He talks to his tailback. He calls the right play. And he gets the first down with Shad Williams. So it's invaluable to have a quarterback, the experience of Tyler Watts on the field. Six carries for Williams, 52 yards. Santonio Beard back on the lineup. They give it to him. Slides to the outside, tries to turn the corner, and he's just inside the 15. Reese Davis, more trickeration. Not much trick to race and just some old-fashioned, hard-nosed football for Nebraska and Texas A&M. is 38-31. Dustin Long has led his team to the doorstep and trying to throw it away. Bland with the pick and Nebraska trying to hang on to a touchdown lead. Okay, boy, huge. Got the ball in, in uh, the red zone and to throw it away like that. Beard comes out of the lineup. Shawn Williams checks back in. Also, Ray Hudson is in there. Option. Open side of the field. Pitch back to Williams at the 15. Flag is down. It may be a face mask. No, it's holding, Ron. Is it? It's holding on uh, Fulgham number three. Can you bring us back? Yeah. I think, actually, Mike, it could be both. But I yep. know you're right from where those other two flags were thrown. Fulgham... Uh, I shouldn't say you're wrong because you may be right too, but I did see the holding yeah. of number three. Yeah, I think it's going to wind up being both of them. Anyway, well, we've had a lot of flags tonight. These uh, gentlemen have had to be busy because of uh, all the things that have happened on the field. 17 total penalties. Fouls were holding by the offense, face mask by the defense. He's offset. You replay the second down. The flag day has moved to October. <laughs> Here's the hold on, uh, that I saw on Fulgham. Now take over. And there's the face mask <laughs> that I saw. <laughs> and meanwhile, uh, Edward Kendrick, a reserve defensive tackle for Tennessee, is down number 93, a senior out of Macon, Georgia. See, I couldn't see the second one because I can only do one thing at a time. <laughs> you know, this. I hope this is just cramps. Uh, this time of year, a lot of teams get banged up, but Tennessee has really had an inordinately oh. high number, particularly on defense. And Philip Fulmer has not used that as an excuse at all. None of his coaches. Mike, we've got a couple of seconds here. It's still a, a wee bit early, but uh, I want to look at your uh, Heisman picks okay, and what has I, happened. I don't, I'm going to tell you what. I think the best player in America and the leader for the Heisman, I don't care where he plays at, Byron Leftwich, he was the number one player. He's what, Here's what he did today, 29 to 42. I like Dorsey because Dorsey wins. Uh, Chris Brown is the best running back in the country since Carnell Williams is hurt. Willis McGay, he's second best running back. Phillip Rivers, all he does is win. And then if I had to add another guy, Carson Palmer, Southern Cal. But I like Byron Leftwich to win this thing. If everything's fair, he's the best player in college football. Well, he's got a few more. We will have one of his games, a Tuesday night game up in uh, Huntington, West Virginia. We'll see the big fella. That's in what, about three weeks? Yes. This is a handoff to McLean in the full bag. Barrels his way down to the 10-yard line. That is not quite enough for the first down as Whiteside makes the tackle. You can go back to what you talked about, Ron, the entries to Tennessee. Uh, you know, the people here have been, uh, had so many glorious years here in football, and all of a sudden they may lose another ball game here tonight, but this coaching staff has done a remarkable job under the circumstances. 
This is the 10th play of the drive. Sam Collins in motion. Beard, he slipped down, trying to make a hard cut. Baker was right there, and he fell right on top of him. But he got the first down. Another first down. We talked about burn the clock, and that's exactly what Alabama's doing. And that's why Tyler Watt's still in the football game, Ron, because they're in the run mode. Well, we're now under 11 minutes left to play in the ball game. First and goal to Alabama. Option play to the open side of the field. Shad Williams turns it up. Boy, does he get racked at the five. Hello, Rashad Baker. Hello. Uh, Reese Davis, let's uh, check back with you and uh, talk about Leftwich. Yeah, I want to support Mike's point a little bit. Marshall against Central Michigan. Byron Leftwich putting up huge numbers again, finding Darius Watts here. 374 yards, and this one went over 10,000 yards passing for his career. Marshall won by five. Reese, that was a bullet. But that's what he can do. He can throw the long pass. He can throw the short accurate. Second down and goal, the line of scrimmage. You see the ball resting at the five-yard line. Option play, watch. Not going to pitch it back, and he takes it to the one-yard line. Had the trail back, and Shot Williams was out there saying, give me the football. You know, he might have should have pitched yeah. that. He would have had a touchdown, but I think what he's thinking right now, let's just get this game secured. I don't want to pitch this ball and take a chance on fumbling. Rashad Baker again. Rashad Baker is making all the plays for the Tennessee defense. He really has. And now player down for Alabama. It looks like the center, Alonzo Ephraim. He has been bothered by a knee injury. Real leader on this uh, Alabama football team, and particularly on the offensive line. I don't know if it is the knee injury that he has aggravated. Pretty cool night. I, I'd be surprised at cramps, wouldn't you? Yeah. Talking to Tyler Watts this week, Ron, and, and Bacon, the defensive back, and we all asked the same question about probation not being able to play, and they said, hey, we want to win the West. That's our goal every game to focus on what we need to do. We know we can't go to a bowl game, but we're going to try to win this West. And when you look at Alabama's having a good year, ineligible for a bowl, Kentucky, California, I think you focus differently because you don't have the bowl. You're not playing for the championship. You focus on every game. You do. Well, Ephraim has to come out. J.B. Closner comes in at center. You saw Watts taking a practice snap at the one-yard line. Last thing you want to do is a mishandled snap. Watts secures it. He is hit immediately behind the line of scrimmage on the 14th play of this drive. Jason now it's Mitchell. going to be fourth down. Yeah, Jason Mitchell felt that that option was coming his way, and he made the play. You almost wonder why they didn't quarterback sneak on that play, but the reason they probably didn't do center in the ball game. Yep. If Ephraim stays in there, they may quarterback sneak. So Robinson is going to attempt the field goal. It's going to be a 22-yard attempt. Sam Collins is the holder. Good pass, and the kick is good. So we'll take a timeout as Ephraim has been uh, attended to on the sideline. 27-14, our new score, Alabama. At the stadium tonight, almost 108,000 people paid their way in. And uh, the Tennessee River, of course, just right outside. You don't have to walk too far out of that uh, south end zone, and you're right there. And you're very close to the ball, Navy. prepares to kick it off. Larkins, the deep man. And Larkins from the five. And 
and here comes a flag down as he got bumped out of bounds around the 31. called against Tennessee on the return. Well, Sunday night football on ESPN at 8.30 Eastern. Coverage begins with NFL primetime presented by Middle Night at 7.30. It's the Indianapolis Colts in Washington. Manning against Spurrier once again. Uh, they reunite. Don't miss it. Sunday night NFL beginning at 7.30. And your figures, uh, Stephen Davis, Steve Spurrier will run him because the Colts are about 24th in rushing defense in the NFL. So they could see some... Uh, Stephen Davis action. Alabama's drive run 15 plays 76 yards. Flossing from the shotgun. Here comes the pressure. Steps up and now throws this one. Got it complete at the 35 yard line to Tony Brown. Here's a dangerous time of the game for Tennessee right here for Casey Flossing because he's going to take some licks in this last eight minutes right here is one of them because you've got to get away from the run now with eight minutes to go and you know Alabama's going to pin their ears back and try to sack him. Clock runs now under eight minutes left in our ball game. Blossom right over the middle ball is tipped off the headgear of the defender uh, who was uh, Freddie Road. Tony Brown, the receiver, Freddie Roach, the linebacker. Neither one of them was able to see it. Keeping Jason Witten in right now, Ron, to block to help Casey Clawson. He's been a blocker the last few plays. And they go with the draw play. Troy Fleming and Adrian Carson. Let's check back on the sideline. During a previous break on the sidelines, Casey picked up the ball, threw it once, barely threw it twice, and said, that's enough. He's got too much pain in there. And, Ron, even when he releases the balls, he was describing to us two days ago, he has pain just opening up his body. Take a look at the ball carry now. Even when he hands it off, the ball carrier is closer to him, so he doesn't have to strain so much in even handing the ball off here. Playing a lot more pain than he was when he started. Tennessee one of seven and third down conversions in the third quarter and uh, Cornelius Wortham is going to get to him and he will be tackled back at the 28 yard line. One for eight now on third down. This might be the time you bring in James, James Banks. Banks. Here's uh, Casey Foss goes down here almost took a real solid hit from Wortham. Wortham had him, and then Roach was, was coming after him pell-mell. Makes you wonder if we'll see James Banks uh, on the next offensive series with uh, about 6.40 to play right now. Colquitt's kick gathered in at the 29 by Williams. Turns the corner, 40-45. That's all he could get, Then another one of the officials got knocked down on the sideline. 44 yards on the kick and 18 on the return. Randy Sanders frustrated with the offense. 27 to 14, Alabama. It gives us an opportunity to take a look at the Pennzoil storyline. Points off turnovers. Alabama, 17 of their 27 points, Mike. Uh, running back Beard of Alabama, 114 all-purpose yards and a touchdown. And Casey Clausen, 14 of 25, 161 and two interceptions. Kelly Washington on the bench, unable to play tonight. Had a concussion against Georgia two weeks ago, and the doctors would not clear him. This is Beard running into the boundary, and they're going to say the clock will continue to roll as he was tackled inbounds. I was trying to think of a musician that, that could not do with uh, losing a partner like Casey Clausen. Losing Kelly Washington would be like, I'm going to date myself now, Johnny Carson without Ed McMahon because he can't throw the ball. There's no big play wide receivers out there. 
So they can't run the ball. They don't have an established running back. You take Kelly Washington out of the game, their offense has been nil. Simon without Garfunkel. <laughs> you got it. Costello without Abbott. Hey. Keep on going. <laughs> no, that's enough. Way too much. <laughs> Getting out of hand. Shad Williams caught by the jersey. They he spin him around. The and now he goes down. And let's go back and check with Reese Davis. Reese. Ron, you don't just wade into Meade Stadium at Rhode Island and come out with a victory without a flotation device. Richmond and Rhode Island suspended at halftime because of this flooded field, you see. It's a 6-0 spider lead. They're going to attempt to finish the game before noon tomorrow. If they don't, by 18 rules, the result stands at 6 nothing. They were gathering two of every kind of spider and ram and building an arc out of gopher wood in that game. <laughs> Those were all A students that they were diving in that water. Hey, listen, Grace, you remember the last game that was canceled because of a rainstorm, don't you? It was it was our game <laughs> two years ago at Virginia Tech, Georgia Tech and Virginia Tech. Yeah, because Lee Corso was there. Lightning hit. <laughs> hit his car. This is as quiet as we've heard Smokey in a while. Brody Croyle coming in at quarterback. Coming up next on ESPN Sports Center, Linda Cohn and Kevin Frazier. Game six from Anaheim. The Irish prove a point. And Corette Hurt, OSU hangs on. Of course, the OSU we're talking about is Ohio State. If Anaheim wins that World Series, everybody will get a rally monkey. Now, uh, here's an interesting uh, graphic. Tennessee has never lost to Florida, Georgia, and Alabama in the same season. And, of course, they already have fallen to Florida and Georgia. And the odds are pretty good right now as they trail by 13 with 446 left to play that that is going to happen and become a first. I'd say, Ron, and we're, Banks is getting ready to come in. So, uh, you know what about Banks? I mentioned that very few players get the kind of attention that he got. Mike? In high school, he was offered basketball scholarships to both Indiana and Purdue. He really had fallen in love with football, almost went to play for Frank Beamer at Virginia Tech, and he wound up here in Tennessee. And Ron, last week against Georgia, when you talked to Philip Former, he said he really performed well and saw the field, and so they feel very confident he can step in sometime. Croyle from the shotgun. Zings this one and just a little bit low. Trapped by Fulgham. This is Brody Crow. Time here to get to some passing experience, but they incomplete, so they'll have to punt. Trying to keep both quarterbacks active. First punt of the second half by Lane Bearden and I'm sure he is very appreciative to his teammates that this is the only one that he has had to kick with that <laughs> bum knee. In case you missed the first half he has a torn ACL and his kicking leg he wears a brace and he just insisted that he still could get the job done. It's off the side of his foot and it's caught by a Tennessee player at the 45 it'll take it across midfield that's Julian Battle who was right in the right spot. We will see Casey Clawson now because that punt Alabama's got a player down Mike excuse me at the 44 it's only 14 yards in the kick and nine on the return that leg probably uh, tightened up because he's been on the yeah. side well, that's, that's a really good point because it's very cool and damp tonight Chris James the player who is down we're going to see Alabama the last regular season game out in Hawaii against the Rainbows. And Watched Hawaii last night, and uh, you know, I'll tell you, they just keep on coming at you. <laughs> After they throw pass number 61, those defensive linemen are just going, please, no more, please. You, you better drink some coffee because that's <laughs> going to be a long game. Oh, boy. They don't run at all. <laughs> well, well, they can't. But, uh, but I'll tell you what, June... <laughs> They throw the football and throw Jank throws it extremely effectively. That's a big win last night in Fresno. You, you better substitute your defensive linemen in Hawaii. Yeah. To, uh, yeah, in the fourth quarter, they'll all have their tongues out. <laughs> 
for Claussen, as Mike suggested, comes back into ball game, and the ball is picked off. That's Petra. It's a 15, 10, 5. Ball is fumbled, and he was down at the one-yard line. Boy, he read that from the time the snap of that the a, ball. That also is the lack of arm yeah, strength yeah. by Clausen because of the injury. Yeah, tried to get the ball to Jonathan Wade. Petra saw it coming, picked it off, and now Carl Torbush, we talked about John Chavis, great defensive coordinator. Carl Torbush has this defense playing, too. You know what? I really think that of all the hires that the head coach at Alabama made, that Carl, oh. and he's got some good ones, but I think that, that, that Carl is his rock because Carl is the type of guy, his ego doesn't get in the way, and a guy who came from a head coaching position to be a coordinator, and he's the type of guy that won't tell you what you want to hear. You ask him, gives you good input. You're, you're exactly right. Carl Torbush is one of the best coaches in the country. And they do not get it in, but they just start running clock, which is all they care about. About to go under four minutes. Omar Gaither making the tackle. And that gives Tyler Watts an opportunity to come to the sideline. So he just couldn't get yeah. enough on this. And you're right. Uh, it was nicely played by Pepper. And, and as I said off the top of the telecast, this kid has gotten a lot better. They yeah. put him in the fire as a freshman. Run, when you looked at that play, it took a long time for... Casey Clawson as he looked out there and threw the football for Pepper to get a good break. Holds him in motion and the pitch back comes. Beard will walk it in. He will score. Tennessee streaks going to come to an end. They had won seven Alabama. in a row. And so they're all kind of first tonight because nobody had ever done that to the Crimson Tide. No. And, and this has been a strange football game. Yeah, it has Sloppy been. in the first half. Crazy call. Eight turnovers. I mean, that's, uh, as we said last year, there were none by either team. Kyle Robinson comes in to attempt the extra point. at home so we'll take a break 322 left new score Alabama 34 to 14 so welcome back and let's take a look at the key play of the game Mike yeah I don't think there's any doubt Ron this this turned the game now Alabama probably would have won this football game anyway but at this time it's a seven point game and John Chavis is not happy. Philip Fulmer's reaction and the Tennessee fans booed. Well, they wound up getting a field goal out of that. But as Mike said, it changed field position and also it just it kept something going for Alabama that uh, that Tennessee was not able to get away from. Zeeful to kick it off. Next Saturday night, we'll come to you from Jacksonville for the annual meeting between the Florida Gators and the Georgia Bulldogs. Larkins from the five. Larkins, oh, does he get tagged at the 20-yard line? Good heavens, what a hit by Todd Bates. On the BCS standings, one thing that's important in this, Miami, Florida, Notre Dame, Georgia, and Ohio State coaches that took over programs that were well stocked by the previous coach. Two years or less on those four teams in the top six. Well, here's a look at James Banks. Tony Brown in motion. We roll him out. Pressure's on. He's going to run it. And he will take it to the 25-yard line. Brooks Daniels making the tackle. And Ron Notre Dame, an impressive win. They're going to move up. Georgia, the team we're going to see next week, uh, may move up also uh, with an impressive lot of scoring win over Kentucky without some of their key players. 
You know, Mike, one other interesting thing about James Banks, he's from the state of Indiana. Well, Matt Mock, who went down, was a starter at uh, LSU from Indiana. And, of course, Rex Grossman is from Indiana. You think of that state in basketball, but obviously there's some darn good quarterbacks up there also. This pass caught by Witten, and the tight end will have maybe three yards in the play. So what you're saying is they just don't trouble the basketball no. and shoot those hoops. Every one of these guys played basketball and also football. Coming up next on ESPN Sports Center, Linda Cohn and Kevin Frazier, game six from Anaheim. The Irish, did they prove a point? And Corbett hurt, but Ohio State hangs on. Talked to Bobby Bowden last Sunday night, and he said that uh, he was impressed with Notre Dame on tape. And uh, a lot of people thought, including myself, Florida State would handle Notre Dame, but uh, he had great respect for them after watching them and studying them. Banks going to be caught from behind and knocked down by Daniels at the 20-yard line. So it's going to be punting time. And the clock runs 90 seconds left in this one. So the string of seven victories over the Alabama Crimson Tide by Tennessee. Well, the domination will end here tonight. And now you wonder if Kelly Washington will get back for South Carolina next week. How will Casey Clawson be uh, in that game? Well, he's going to be sore, and he's going to be sore for several days. And your point's well taken. It brings up the, the situation of how many days will he be able to work out this week? You know, Williams falls down. So let's close the book on Casey and his night. The three interceptions in the first six games, three tonight. So that tells you all you want to know. Uh, not the arm strength that he needs. Kelly Washington not in the game. Gave Alabama a chance not to play against a big playmaker. Mike season low rushing for Tennessee 59 yards you know Philip Fulmer had something very uh, interesting to say the other day he said while we've beaten Alabama the last four years we've averaged running at 48 times a game in for 167 yards rushing and tonight 59 yards rushing right there and that's the difference They'll take an E. 55 seconds, now 54. What do you think this week coming up? Georgia, Florida. Florida gets a week to get some of their injured players back. And another week to work as well. Georgia had their hands full, and they, but they still they acquitted themselves nicely. I think we're going to see a typical Georgia-Florida football game. I think, I think Georgia, Ron, is playing some of the best football in the country right now. It's going to be very difficult for Florida to beat Georgia next week. Takes a knee and that should do it. The Crimson Tide will end the streak at seven. score Alabama 34 Tennessee 14 coming up next is Sports Center for more log on to